Oh, it feels great to finally get three points. And while we can't draw any conclusions, Arsenal winning. I know Spurs won, but what dampened the mood with Spurs winning was outweighed by Manchester City struggles. You know, stay humble, eh, Harlan. You know, you might win trophies. You've won a lot of trophies. But in life, keep your ass humble or life or God will humble you. And it's going from bad to worse for City, despite Pep Guardiola signing a new contract. Speaking of new contracts, there's rumours around Ethan Wamwari and obviously Bakayo Saka. There's a bit of other and schisms where transfer news is concerned and obviously we defeated Nottingham Forest three goals to nil bangers from everyone a sizzler from Saka he's becoming he's Bakayo Saka in his own right but he's Black Iron Robin he's becoming inevitable and he's in a nice way he's becoming a bit evil like obviously Saka knows how good he is but for me evidently as a fan he's, he's starting to believe not that he's starting but he's starting to move like what we know he is is the guy in it obviously Thomas Partey continues his good season with a screamer nice to see young Ethan get his first goal nice to see Odegaard get an assist as well as Saka and obviously big up Raheem Sterling Typically, you know, you have your two best players in Saka and Odegaard on song and it's a joy to watch and you're more likely to get three points. Obviously, big up Raheem Sterling. As usual, all the goals came down the right-hand side. We did rest a couple of key players in that game and now we've got a lot of games coming thick and fast. The Sportings of this world, the West Ham United, the Manchester United and so on and so forth. But let's crack on, lads. Anyway, smash the like button. You know, Haaland's... Since he tried to chat Ish to Arteta, Arteta must have done some voodoo on Man City. You know, he did say he knows all the secrets. But yeah, Man City have lost all five games in all comps. Their worst run of results since 06 under Stewart Pierce, people. And you know what? It's a bit unfair to get Harlem because all of the players are stinking up the place. The golden boy Phil Foden better than Bakayo Saka. Boy, I know if Saka had all them wavy players around him, he would be doing the business really. But yeah, Haaland, Foden, Bernardo Silva, another one that can't shut his mouth. They're babies. And, you know, I've got nothing against Manchester City as a club, but your players are entitled, pardon my language, pricks. Any huge people. You know, it was Mikel Arteta's uh, 250th game, I believe, for Arsenal. We secured our 2,000th top flight win, which is obviously great. Obviously, these are superficial things, but you love to hear it. Arsenal moved quickly on contract talks for duo as Man City pressure. Arsenal, or better yet, the Gunners are laying down the framework to commit two of their prized assets to new long-term contracts. We're set to open talks with Bukayo Saka over a new deal and obviously the young Ethan. Now... This doesn't scare me. Saka's a household name. He's a top-class, world-class player. He's got two years left on his deal. I personally believe his agent plays a blinder because he gets... It feels like Saka signs three and a half or so year deals. And it feels like when you do something like that, you're always 18 months away from a new deal. I rate it. I know as a club we're a tribal, but Saka's agent knows his worth. Saka knows his worth. You know what you mean to the club. Doesn't surprise me. In theory, if Man City, Real Madrid, all of Europe's elite are looking at Bukayo Saka's contractual situation, people. You know, he did sign a new contract last year. It's nice to see that we're going to try and deal with this early when it needs to be dealt with. Obviously, not just him. You look at, you know, the, the Salibas of this world. There's a lot of work to be done, people. Um... I don't know. I'm not saying he does or doesn't know what he's talking about, but AFC Camden has said, from what I hear, he's already being difficult. Arsenal starting early. Negotiations are difficult. If you're Bakayo Saka and you continue this trajectory, naturally, your agent should be trying to get you what you're worth. Naturally, players want to be played a bit more. Clubs, from a business perspective, want to play pay less. A career short, I'm not saying Bakayo Saka is all about money and all of that, but you should be being difficult this early um, in negotiations. The longer it goes on, obviously, the, the, the weaker... Uh, Arsenal's position is and the stronger you are because unless Arsenal are going to go out there and spend probably 100 million on a right winger to replace Bakayo Saka, whoever that is, it's cheaper to give him the contract and obviously we know there's a lot of earners, you know, I don't actually know if Bakayo is our top earner, but he probably should be, if I'm completely honest with you. Where Ethan's concerned, you know, apparently once he turns 18, there'll be that. Obviously, with Ethan turning 18 in March, you'd love to see him sign a five-year deal. You can, I think when you're 17, you can only sign a maximum of three years. So we'll have to watch what's going on there. I would love to believe this is right, but for what it's worth, Arsenal could reportedly succeed in landing Alexander Izak in the January window with Newcastle delaying contract talks and Champions League football being on offer at the Emirates. We really think we're going to spend 80, 90, 100 million in January on, on, on Alexander Izak. I hope I'm wrong. I would love to see a striker and a couple of others arrive at the club in January, but I don't believe that. And let's not forget, he's got, I believe, four years on his deal. Um, 
Obviously, respectfully to Kai Havertz, Isaac's a better striker. We don't need to look at that statistics to tell us that. We're being linked with Zuba Mendy once again, people. Manchester City and Liverpool, as well as us, are plotting, seeing if they can tempt him again. We've also been linked with Brian Diaz, as you know. On the topic of new contracts, while we focused on Bukayo Saka, we have heard over the last week or so that Trossard's in talks to commit his future. Um, I'm no religious watcher of uh, Malaga, but from what I see of Antoni Antonio Cordeo, I think he can play on the left as well as a couple of other positions. At 18 years of age, he looks quite good. Allegedly, we're the front runners to sign the young Spanish starlet, as it says there, people. And he's been described as a top priority for Arsenal in 2025. Juventus, Aston Villa, Liverpool, Juventus, apologies for saying that twice, Bayern Munich, PSG, they're all being linked with the Spanish under-19 international. Bring him. That's probably more realistic in January. Apparently, Sociedad feel powerless to stop, or better yet, prevent, Zuba Mendy from leaving and apparently he's on the radar of all clubs going into the January window. We all know he's valued at around 60 million euros. Apparently he has a release clause and we have also ironically been linked with the Sociedad director Roberto Alebi. So, you know, you come over to the club, bring Zuba Mendy with you. You know about Mikel Arteta, you know about us, you've been involved in the Moreno... Uh, Moreno deals, Monreal deals, technically Tierney going on loan there. Bring the other wavy Spanish players as well that are not necessarily household names. But it's easy to link Arsenal with positions that we need to address either immediately in the long term. It's easy to link us with the Kudises, the Zubamendis, the Isaacs, you know, Yokorez. We, you know, I have no doubt that Arsenal and a lot of clubs in theory are interested, but interest is very different from negotiations, ultimately making bids and bringing the player to the carpet. So you do have to take these things with a pinch of salt um, with that. It wouldn't be Arsenal transfer news without being linked with Ferran Torres. Both Arsenal and Aston Villa are apparently re uh, reportedly interested in the 24-year-old. His stock's probably fallen at the moment, people. We've gone over that already. We're still being linked with Arda Galer, whether you believe that or not, it's up to you. Uh, Mikel Arteta obviously is going to say he's very happy about the game, people. You know, Jorginho came off because he was on the yellow. Thomas Partey did have a great impact. Um, Raheem Sterling, it was nice to see him get an assist. And the Martinelli's, the Declan's, the Kai's for once, seeing them rested, which I'm not going to lie, going into the game, I, did, I wasn't against the changes, but... It, you know, we did play a lot more fluid, but I don't necessarily would say I feel comfortable with Gabriel Jesus up front instead of Kai Havertz, whether I rate whoever or not. And obviously Declan Rice in the middle. And for me, it was a great game, you know, clean sheet, goals, performance, every free flowing, entertaining football. We can't draw too many conclusions, but it was wavy and shout out to everyone. But, you know, I would say Bakayo Saka and, and Odegaard, I don't want to overdo it, but it's shades of, for me, yesterday of Alexis Sanchez and Ozil purely because there was times where obviously it's an 11 player game people but it just felt like them two were on another wavelength and it does feel like that with Bukayo, Saka and Odegaard some of the passes and the little one twos and all of that was great people um you can't be surprised by Odegaard's impact the team needed to bring energy it was lovely to see Ethan getting minutes I wouldn't say Odegaard was injured but naturally he's not played for a while we need to take time with him as Mikel Arteta has said I understand that I am responsible for him and you have to do that brick by brick today we put in another brick but now we have to put the cement make sure that it does doesn't get dry so that we can put in another one and another one and that's got that one is going to stick then we put one more layer we want to put five in a row believe me it won't work and we'd have to manage that with his expectations and his load as well which is really important I would obviously love to see Ethan exposed to more minutes but I think I I think that's mainly because of where we're at as a club and the injuries and all of that isolated to Ethan's development and Mikel Arteta I think he's doing the right thing. And to be fair with you, you can say what you want about Arteta. Um, you know, I think he he obviously gave Ethan his debut. Doesn't have the best of records with young players. But this is now like Mikel Arteta, that's your project, respectfully. Obviously, you know, we, we'll get on to that in a sec. But the Sackers, the Martinelli's, the Salibas, technically, they were at the club already, really and truly. I think Ethan will be all right. You look at how he's in, whatever you say about Arteta, Sackers improved, Martinelli's made improvements, Odegaard's made improvements, Saliba's made improvements, Gabriel's made improvements, Benjamin White got, got you know, improved. Obviously, whether you necessarily rate Aaron Ramsdale, who's left or not, when he walked into the Emirates to when he walked out, was he not a better goalie? So... I think Ethan will be all right. He did say he's a bit tempted to people to play him. I think he's the second youngest scorer, you know, 17 years of age scoring in the Prem. Cesc Fabregas did that as well. Um, obviously, Saka didn't play for England. I don't think anybody cares with that. Obviously, I don't think they can manage the expectations externally of Ethan. All they can do is tell him to keep his feet on the ground. Ethan seems like a cool 
cat in that regards. He's clearly someone that's got a well-rounded family base and advisors around him. He's at the, you know, the club where they're doing their thing. Just needs to take it one step at a time. He can't control the headlines and all of the crazy things. A bit like the young 14-year-old Max Dolman where all these YouTube and Twitter experts are proclaiming him as this, that and the other. And trust me, that man in a couple of years, hopefully he stays at Arsenal. He's brilliant. But leave the man to develop. They can't, you, you can't get too excited in it. So is what it is. It was lovely to see Calafuri back. Obviously, Calafuri is going to be, you know, um, you know, talking about our good defensive performance. He said he didn't feel tired. And obviously, we're going to have to be a bit cute and clever with our fitness around players. You know, we've got injuries. Some players have played more. Some players have played less. You know, we've got a condensed festive calendar now. So we're going to have to be easy. And, you know, it's lovely to get 2,000 top flight wins. Um, You know, we're chasing Liverpool, but we're second there. Man United are not that far behind us, people. Teams we've beaten the most in the top flight, Everton, Manchester City, to be fair, respectfully to City, you lot weren't serious like you are now. Aston Villa, Newcastle, to be fair, I thought Spurs would be a lot higher up the list, but yeah, it is what it is. Venues we've won the most at Goodison Park, Villa Park, Stamford Bridge, St. James's Park. Boy, hey, you can't really see Anfield and you can't see Old Trafford, can you? We're going to have to change that. So yeah, man, big, big up the club and everything. So yeah, with that being said, people, let me know your thoughts on the transfer news we ran over. Let me know your thoughts, obviously, on what you made of the game. Most importantly, stay safe, stay blessed. We'll link up again soon. Peace. <laughs>